What up everybody, Ole here. Hope everyone's having a great day. Today we're doing a different kind of video. We are gonna be talking football, soccer, football, okay? So this video, I'll be talking about Shakhtar Donetsk. If you're, if you're a football, soccer fan, you've probably heard of this team, right? You heard of it probably in the Champions League as like a really random team, you know? Like in the group stages, Man City plays them sometimes, like a lot of times, Real Madrid plays them a lot of times. They made the knockouts a few times, and a lot of people know them for all the Brazilians they produced, like William, Fernandinho, uh, Luis Adriano, all these famous players, Marlos, Douglas Costa, Tyson was a really good one too. Who are they? You know? So I'm Ukrainian, so I love keeping track of Ukrainian soccer too. So today I'll be going over the story of Shakhtar Donetsk. Let's go. Let's get it. Shakhtar Donetsk, as the city and the name said, they're from Donetsk, which is in eastern Ukraine and they were playing in Donbas Arena for a very long time. That was their home stadium until 2014. Russian invasion, or like the, the first part of the Russian invasion began and that whole conflict, which uh, they had to force them to relocate. But that was their original stadium. The owner, Rina Takhmetov, the Donbas Arena, Arena was one of the best stadiums in Eastern Europe. I think it was actually ranked the number one best in Eastern Europe. Very, very cool stadium, hosted 70,000. Uh, people. Their current coach is Igor Jovetrovic. Their most famous coach they had for a very long time was Romanian Luchescu. They were founded in 1936. They played in the Soviet Union League and in the Ukrainian Premier League. So they're a very historic club as well. Not the number one most historic club in Ukraine. The number one most historic club is the Dynamo Kiev. Also an awesome, awesome team. But they haven't been as successful in recent modern times as Shakhtar Donetsk has been. For those of you who don't, don't know also, Shakhtar in Ukrainian means a miner. So that's their name and it's actually like the, the tools are in their logo as well. So Shakhtar Donetsk, they're the miners. And the reason that's their name is because Donetsk is a big like mining city. They have a lot of factories, like coal factories, stuff like that. Let's go into the modern story. So some of their historic achievements have been in the Soviet Cup, the Soviet Union, they were winners of the Soviet Cup four times, Soviet First League one time in 1954, and the Seasons Cup one time in 1984. They weren't considered like a really good team in um, that era back in the day. More in the modern days in the Ukrainian Premier League, they've been winners a whopping 13 times. So usually in Ukraine, the winner is usually Shakhtar or Dynamo. Those are the main two teams in Ukraine. Uh, it's very rare that another team wins it. They won the Ukrainian Cup 13 times and the Ukrainian Super Cup 9 times. Oh, oh and a big one on this, and they won the UEFA Cup in 2008-9 season. So they actually have won a European trophy as well, which uh, that was actually the last year it was called the UEFA Cup before it switched to the Europa League. Shakhtar is uh, known for producing some really good players that they sell to top European clubs. The way they do a lot of this too is they had a, like a strong Brazilian base in their team. So basically the whole team is, was always Brazilian. And because they have so many Brazilians in their team, like pretty much the whole team spoke like Portuguese. And this attracted more Brazilians to come there because they knew they could have like that base and like friendships. So Shakhtar had this method where they scouted really young Brazilians in Brazil and bought them and then they developed in the Ukrainian league and they actually and they had the chance to play and show themselves in the Champions League which was attractive to them at a young age helped them make transfers to a huge club so a lot of these famous players are like I mentioned Willian was at Shakhtar and then transferred to Chelsea Douglas Costa was at Shakhtar then played at Bayern and Juventus um Alex Teixeira was really good he linked to Liverpool and went to China then um he's not Brazilian he's Armenian but Mkhitaryan Mkhitaryan he played at United Arsenal Roma Tyson, but he, he never went to a big club. It was Luis Adriano, I believe he went to AC Milan for a little bit. Fernandinho, Fernandinho played at Manchester City. And Fred, who's currently at Manchester United, which was funny, it was like all Brazilians, and then the, the defenders are usually Ukrainian, and the goalie. A lot changed since 2014. Since the 2014 conflict started, Russia with um, Ukraine having the revolution, Russia started invading and just doing some fuck shit. Um, with Crimea and Eastern Ukraine. Because of that, Donetsk has been occupied, their home city, since 2014. So Shakhtar had to go through a lot of changes since then. Basically, since the war started in 2014, the Shakhtar Donetsk was forced to relocate, which was a bummer because the stadium was so nice. So they played, they played from 2014 to 2016, they played their matches in Lviv, which is the whole other side of the country. Okay, so, Donetsk is in eastern Ukraine, Lviv is all the way in western Ukraine, all the way by Poland. 
So they have to relocate almost 1,000 kilometers, 620 miles to be exact, to play in Arena Lviv. So that was their home stadium for 2014 to 2016. That's where they played their Champions League matches and they trained in Kyiv. 2017 through 2020, they ended up playing in Kharkiv, which was a lot closer to Donetsk, still trained in Kyiv. In May 2020, Shakhtar started to play their home matches in, in the Aneska Olympijski in, in the main stadium in Kyiv. So where Dynamo Kyiv play too? They were playing there ever since. The best Shakhtar has ever done in the Champions League was 2010-11 season. And they lost in the quarterfinals to Barcelona. So they reached the quarterfinals then. Shakhtar already had so many difficulties. 2022 hits. The Russian invasion of Ukraine. Unjustifiable, horrible, horrible circumstance. Then what? The, the whole Ukrainian league had to be voided. In February, the league was voided. So UEFA allowed players in um, Ukraine and Russia in the league to be loaned out. Even though it wasn't the transfer window because of the occurrences. They can't play anymore, you know what I mean? So. A lot of players left, so Shakhtar completely changed. So, like all their best players basically left. All their foreign Brazilian players, almost every single one of them. Pretty much all the Brazilians left. Just name a few, David Neres, Dota, Marcos Antonio, Bernard Fernando, Ismaili, Solomon, he's one of their best players. Pedrinho, Marlon, Barquinhos, Cipriano. They brought in a few players, mostly Ukrainian. Kandr Vukov, Ivan Petriak, Marian Shved. For the first time in modern history, Shakhtar Donetsk is transformed. I've never seen them like this. They've always had these foreign players, Brazilian players. And Dynamo Kyiv was always known as the team with more Ukrainians. So they were like the more nationalistic team. But now, due to these events, Shakhtar has actually turned into the team that's even more Ukrainian than Dynamo Kyiv. In their lineup, starting lineup, almost everyone's Ukrainian. It's either 11 out of 11 or 10 out of 11 in their starting lineups are Ukrainian. In their last Champions League game against uh, Real Madrid, which they drew 1-1, our oldest player on the pitch was 26. Our whole team is basically youth Ukrainian players now, and they are stepping up to the plate, man. They're playing so, so well. My personal opinion, I didn't know how they would play. I didn't even know that Ukrainian Premier League would continue, but it continued this year despite war. They just have a lot of protocols. They play without fans. They play all in um, Western Ukraine where it's a bit safer. I thought, I thought they'd be doomed. I thought Dynamo Kyiv would take over, maybe give a shot for a team like Zorya Luhansk. No, they shocked me, man. These youth players stepped up to the plate and they're impressing me more and more and more. And they've been getting results. They're number one in the Ukrainian Premier League right now. They're killing it there. They're in third place currently in the group stage, but they um they got their games over with Real Madrid. They got two games left against RB Leipzig and Celtics. So hopefully they get a result. Um, their Champions League games, they can't even play in Ukraine. So they were playing in on Western Ukraine. Now that is too risky for other teams. And they're playing in Poland, in Warsaw, Poland. The one to look out for is Mikhailo Mudryk. He's been on the radar for Arsenal, for Brentford, and there's even rumors of PSG playing talent. They're representing Ukraine really well, and you could see their desire and passion to um, overcome these difficulties and really give something for Ukraine to be proud of. I, I'm Ukrainian, I, I want success of all Ukrainian teams. I always rooted for Dynamo Kyiv, for Shakhtar Donetsk, for Dnipro, Dnipropetrovsk, for Zorya Luhansk. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna wrap it up there. Just want to go over that story of Shakhtar Donetsk for those that didn't know, for my football fans, soccer fans out there. Because I'm really passionate about topics like this, I could talk about it day and night. Let me know if you want more videos like this and let's see where Shakhtar Donetsk ends up going. Comment, comment what you think, how Shakhtar is gonna do in the Champions League. Let me give me your prediction. Slavo Ukraini. Cheers. Enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe.